Welcome back everybody. So going to do something a little bit different today. Now if like me you're a home brewer in the UK then you're probably familiar with the name Dave Line. So Dave wrote three books before sadly passing away in 1979 at the age of just 37. Now he's probably most famous for his first book The Big Book of Brewing uh, but for me it was always his second book Brewing beers like those you buy, which always been a particular favourite of mine. Now, I must admit, although I've had this book three times now, I've bought this book, um, I've never actually brewed a single recipe from it. But I was flicking through it recently, <clears throat> and it's 45 years since this book was published, and lots of the recipes that are actually in this book, the beers don't exist anymore. So that's when I had a bit of an idea, and I thought, why not brew beers like those you can't buy? So before we get into the respite and the brewing of the Royal Oak beer, let's first have a look at the history of the Eldridge Port Company and the Dorchester Brewery. Now this contains fires, hundreds of executions and somehow even Dame Judi Dench. Now I'm not suggesting that Dame Judi Dench is an arsonist or an assassin, but if that don't make you want to watch, Dorchester Brewery would not open until 1881, but its roots lay well before, with husband and wife, Charles and Sarah Eldridge. Charles was born in Somerset in 1791, but it isn't until 1827 that it becomes of interest to our story. In this year, Charles becomes wine steward to the Williams family at Bridehead, where he developed his knowledge in wine and spirits. We know that he married and would have one daughter, before being widowed. Sarah was born Sarah Bishop in 1797 and would later marry John Bolson, the landlord of the Green Dragon Tavern in Dorchester. Interestingly, the Green Dragon was leased by Sarah's parents from the same Williams family where Charles was employed as a wine steward, and it is here that Sarah developed her knowledge of brewing. Sarah would also be widowed, and we can only speculate that Charles and Sarah's shared connection with the Williams estate led to their meeting and eventual marriage in 1829. Fast forward some four years and the couple would take up the lease on the Antelope Hotel situated on South Street in Dorchester. Seen here on the left, the Antelope Hotel was most famous at the time for housing a trial for the supporters of the defeated Duke of Monmouth in 1685. This after a failed rebellion where an attempt to depose the new king, James II, after his brother's death, Charles II, was unsuccessful. Some 216 of the Duke of Monmouth's supporters would be sentenced to death here. The Antelope would prove a far happier place for Charles and Sarah, however, and their time here would be highly successful. Charles's knowledge of wine and spirits would prove particularly helpful with the rise in popularity again of these drinks in the decades following the Napoleonic War. Come the year 1837, Charles and Sarah moved back to the Green Dragon, and what we do know is that by now the tavern is also a modest brewery. For almost a decade the couple would enjoy great success up until Charles's death in 1846, whereupon Sarah would go into partnership with another brewer Alfred Mason, forming Eldridge, Mason and Co. Business would go from strength to strength, and it cannot be underestimated just how crucial Sarah was to this. In the 1851 census, Sarah is listed as a brewer employing nine men, and she would go on to take out more leases on several other pubs in key locations around Dorset, whilst also in 1854 taking over operations at the Pale Ale Brewery in Dorchester. In 1856, however, Sarah would pass away, and it's this event where things get rather murky. 
In 1870, Sarah's old business partner, Alfred Mason, would retire, selling his share of the business to brothers Edwin and Alfred Pope, the company finally becoming Eldridge Pope & Co. And herein lies the murkiness. Some reports claim Sarah's share passed on to her daughter Emily after her death, while some reports claim it passed on to her son-in-law, John Tizard. What we do know, however, is that in 1872, John Tizard and Edwin Pope would sign a deed of partnership, which would ultimately lead to the Pope family gaining full control of the business. Alfred Pope, who was a solicitor, wrote into the deed of partnership that if either partner, John Tizard or Edwin Pope should die, then the surviving partner would have the option, within six months, to purchase the deceased partner's shares. Apparently, John Tizard was unaware of this and believed that upon his death, his share would stay within the family. Sure enough, within 12 months, John Tizard had died, and after some legal challenges, Edwin Pope would eventually purchase his share for £48,440, or, in today's money, £7.3 million. Alfred and Edwin would share great success together at the Green Dragon Brewery, so much so that in 1879 they purchased a large plot of land alongside Isambard Kingdom Brunel's South Coast Railway to be the site of their huge new brewery. Within 12 months, work on the new Dorchester Brewery had begun, and it would open in 1881, complete with its own railway sidings, allowing for the easy and fast distribution of their beer all around the country. So big was the Dorchester Brewery that it became the biggest employer in the town, and after 16 hugely successful years, where the Pope Brothers acquired other breweries and public houses in the southwest of England, the business was floated, becoming Eldridge Pope and Co Limited. In the early decades of the 20th century, Alfred Pope's four sons would take prominent positions in the company, including Edward Alexander, who would sadly die in 1919 from injuries sustained in the Great War, and George Clement, who in 1921 would acquire the rights to the Huntsman trademark. Eldridge Pope would use this logo in the South, whilst my fellow Northerners will probably most associate the Huntsman with Tetleys. In 1922, Tragedy would strike as a huge fire ripped through the brewery. So bad was the damage that no beer would be brewed on site until 1925. During this time, the company would brew their beer in Weymouth, Dorset, at the Devonish Brewery. And as fate would have it, 20 years later, Dorchester Brewery was able to repay the favour when the Devonish Brewery was severely damaged in the Second World War. Edwin Pope would die in 1928 at the age of 83 leaving assets behind worth £120 million in today's money, followed in 1934 by the death of his brother and business partner, Alfred. Thereafter followed a period of stability for the brewery, with few changes other than the replacement of the brewery's old copper stills for more modern stainless steel ones. 1954 would see Dennis Holliday become the head brewer at Dorchester, and he would hold this position for the next 28 years, and in 1968, Dennis would create a beer destined for the Guinness Book of Records with the creation of Thomas Hardy's Ale. At 13% alcohol, this was the UK's strongest commercially brewed beer at the time. This was brewed at the suggestion of Alfred Pope's grandson Cecil to commemorate the 40th anniversary of the death of Dorset novelist and poet Thomas Hardy. This era also saw the brewery win a record seven international brewing awards at the 1972 London Brewers Exhibition and saw the production of popular real ales such as the Royal Oak which we'll be attempting to recreate later. Whilst the company would continue to build an impressive portfolio of public houses, the early to mid 90s would see the start of a chain of events that would ultimately lead to the loss of both the company and the brewery. A series of disastrous business decisions Many made to comply with new government regulations regarding the monopoly of breweries with their own public houses led to the business being split in many ways. Ultimately, this led to the brewery and the company going in two separate directions. Whilst Eldridge, Pope & Co Limited would sell the business to Thomas Hardy Brewery, Eldridge Pope himself still maintained ownership of the Dorchester Brewery and land itself. 
This meant that for a while, Thomas Hardy Brewery would continue to brew the Eldridge Port range of beers at the Dorchester Brewery. Thomas Hardy Brewery even attempted to purchase the Dorchester Brewery and land from Eldridge Port. However, their offer was rejected in favour of an offer from a property developer. By 2003, rising rental costs at the brewery led to its closure with the loss of 57 jobs and ending over 120 years of brewing on the site. Since its closure, the site has been developed into a shopping and eating complex, whilst also housing apartments and a hotel. Sadly, by 2020, most of the brewery itself had been demolished, and although gone, will now try to recreate one of its most popular beers to ensure it won't be forgotten. Possibly, if I were any good as a cameraman. Uh... Nope.